But we're going to move on to the second skill today, which is uh, kicking again, but uh, this time kicking along the ground. So um, we did catch up with Steph earlier in the week. Let's have a look at what Steph said about this skill, and then I'll come back to you, Sam. Now, our second skill today, we don't actually have a video for, and it's a bit of an unusual skill, and that's kicking along the ground. We uh, we see on the television the ball being kicked through the air all the time, and we know that's a big part of the game. Steph, why would we be kicking along the ground, and how do we coach kids to do it? Yeah, another really tough skill. I feel like a lot of our um, game skills are tough, but a lot of fun, this one. So we see the likes of, you know, the Dacos brothers kicking the ball along the ground and kicking goals and, and things like that. Why would we kick the ball on the ground? Well, it could give you advantage forward. Um, the, the beauty of our game is that the ball is oval and it spins in all sorts of directions. Um, but if you can master the kicking the ball on the ground, you can kind of get it to where you want it to go. Um, especially if you've got pressure coming at you and that sort of more game sense situations, um, you know, you can get the ball moving the way you want it to go and you can get it going left, right, straight and all those sorts of things. So it is a really important skill. It's probably not something that's utilised too often um, in the game, but you often see forwards um, practising their craft and, and using the ball to spin along the ground if they're caught in positions that are, you know, on angles, if they're having shots on goal or if they need to uh, avoid th their opponent from smothering the ball and things like that. So it is a lot of fun. Uh, I know that we spend a lot of time having shots on goal from the pockets because that's where you'd most likely do these types of kicks. Um, and it's really important if you want to surge the ball forward in conditions that might be, you know, not preferable, like very windy, um, if, it's a, if it's a wet day um, and things like that. So it's a really beneficial skill. Um, if you can get the ball spinning the way you want it, um, it'll be even more beneficial for you. Terrific. And it's um, is, is there anything from a safety perspective with kicking either in the air or along the ground that we should be considering? Yeah, well, I think in terms of you're going to have to have a really strong toe point to do this. Um, and a lot of kids um, try and overcompensate by kicking distance and kicking really hard and they can actually hit their toes into the ground. So that's really something to consider um, and just talk about the sweet spot and the, their ability to not have to kick the absolute cover off the ball but just be really controlled with it. Um, obviously with the bouncing ball, if there's students around the area, you know, it, it can be unpredictable and, you know, you might cop a falcon or something like that. So in an environment where there's a lot of space would be something that I would definitely consider. Um, but again, it comes back to exploration with the, with the footy. If you can have students have a bit of free play and have their own space to practice this skill, um, that would be beneficial for that. Terrific. Thank you. No worries. Um, so... It's a bit unusual that we need to do both of these things. And as you've said before, uh, lots of exploration, lots of different situations during gameplay. But what are the key differences in the process for kicking the ball along the ground compared to kicking it in the air? How do, how do we teach kids how to do those two different approaches? Yeah, so again, I guess it kind of comes back to, you know, I, I sort of look at kicking, kicking, whether you're kicking along the ground, kicking a drop punt, torpedo. Um, so really the, the, the main difference is that what you're trying to achieve with it is going to change the way you hold the ball and where you might kick the ball um, on your foot. And so really the, the main difference for me is that just how you, you, how you hold it and how they'll hold it and, and where the impact point is, they're going to be the, the key differences, which just go, which all go back to is what are you trying to do? So um, I know sort of sometimes when we think, you know, kicking the ball along the ground is actually just kicking a ball along the ground. It, potentially is a little bit easier than actually kicking it, trying to kick it in the air and find someone. Cause you can just say, just want you to kick it along the ground and see what the ball does because it's an oval shaped ball. It spins and it does lots of things. In fact, that moves a little bit counterintuitively um, when you're trying to, if you're trying to bend the ball around corners, um, but they're really fun activities for the kids to do. You can put some things and say, I want you to try and bend the ball around, have a go, figure it out. Um, so where you, how you might hold the ball, where you, where you put it on your foot, what you're trying to do. Um, I mean, they're, they're the key differences, but it's much the same as if you're going to try and snap the ball. What are the key differences for that? Well, it's just how you hold the ball and where you, where you make contact on your foot. Um, but I, I, I really love uh, sort of the kicking along the ground or dribble kicking 
depending on your terminology, um, because you can bend it and it can do some really fun stuff. And so you can have some really cool challenges for the kids to try and figure out. And it's one of those ones that's really good at start getting the kids to start to understand. If I hit the ball, this part of my foot, where's it going to go and what's it going to do? Um, so a really, really good challenge um, activity. So is it a prerequisite to be kicking the ball in the air first? Is that, do you want to get that right before? No, I, like, I, like I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't worry about, you know, there's a picking order or anything like that. Like, again, as I say, kicking's kicking. Um, so you can give it to them at any point of time. Like I said, it's a pretty good one for trying to figure out what the ball does when you move around. I know some, I think some people sometimes think that it's kicking the ball on the ground means you have to bend it. But I mean, you don't just kicking the ball along the ground kicking, is kicking the ball around. They can kick straight. They can do whatever they want. Um, so I, I don't think that there's a prerequisite for, for either of those. This is, again, part of that whole, well, we're just trying to create a really well-rounded skill. And if you want um, a child to become an, an expert or master the, master the skill, um, the, the ones who will will be the ones who almost have like an intuitive understanding because of all the exploration and the, all the all the repetitions they've done with a bit of variation um, of if I put the ball here, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, you, you mentioned that word intuitive. Um, so we'll get kids in gameplay who will just intuitively know which is the right kick at the right time and, and where to place the ball because they've done all that exploration. Is that is that a skill that can be taught as well? Yeah, oh, 100%. Um, I, like I believe it. Intuition really just comes from experience. So the, it's the experiences that you you sort of have and you get put in that allow you then when the situation arises, you that's where your intuition comes from. Um, and so if you're wanting to train this or give opportunity for so that kids know, okay, and I would I would extend this out to not just dribble kicking, but all kicking um, in terms of what kick is required in what situation, then you need to put them in situations where they can get lots of repetitions in, in game-like situation. So that doesn't mean playing a, you know, a 12 on 12 or 15 on 15, that could be a, a three on two sort of activity um, where they get lots and lots of repetitions, but they're seeing lots of different scenarios and they have to try and figure out what, what they're going to do. And remembering that um, learning takes time, um, you know, learning is a permanent change in behavior. So we can't look at learning in one lesson. We've got to look at learning over a long period of time. Um, and so they may not be great they may not have great coordination with it. They may have um, a lot of sort of what we would call bad variability. So the bad variability is stuff that's not helping them um, get the ball where they need it to go. Um, but over time, that bad variability comes down and they become quite coordinated. And then over a longer period of time, they then actually get what we call good variability. And so that good variability is the stuff that allows them to pick the right kick at the right time in the right situation. Yeah, I like that. That's a good way of thinking.